Zeus, Hades, and Poseidon are some of the popular names we hear in mythology. However, Greek mythology isn't the only thing we should know about. There are other great mythologies for you to discover. Welcome to The Bestest, the channel that provides you the bestest news and videos you should know about. In today's episode, we'll discuss the most famous mythologies in the world. Before we start, please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to get notifications of our videos. We all know that the bestest can serve you a platter filled with everything you have yet to find out. All over the world, we hear different stories about how things began and ended. And that isn't what all mythologies are about. Some may be surrounded by fantasy, but these mythologies are truly amazing, especially when you get to read some of them. In today's episode, the bestest will be highlighting the most famous mythologies we know and love. These mythologies leave us with powerful gods, heroic characters, epic adventures, and tales about vengeance and love. So let's start getting to know these famous mythologies. At number one, we have Norse mythology. We all know the story of God King Odin and his sacrifices for spiritual growth. Odin was the king of the Iser tribe while also being the god of war, earth, sky, wisdom, poetry, and magic. Odin's most unique attribute is his single piercing eye. His other eye socket is empty and that eye was sacrificed for wisdom. Odin gave it up so he could drink from the well of wisdom. On one occasion, Odin hung on the tree of Yggdrasil for nine days and nights without any form of nourishment from his companions. He sacrificed himself to perceive the runes which was said to hold many of the greatest secrets of existence. The God King often appears as the leader of the Wild Hunt. This was a ghostly procession of the dead through winter sky. But that's not all that makes Odin great and all-powerful. Riding a horse with eight legs, traveling with a raven, and a wolf giving him information about the different things happening all over the world. Wednesday is also linked astrologically to the solid liquid Mercury. So maybe this is part of the reason why most fans of Norse mythology are into Wednesdays. Norse mythology is just the beginning. Marvel showed different ways for us to be familiar with the myths as well. They have presented us with Loki, Thor, and Hela. But that's not all just where Norse mythology revolves around with. There are still other heroic figures in it you should know about. So stick around and let's go on a fantasy-filled adventure through these mythologies. At number 2, we have Greek mythology. One of the most famous tales from the Greek mythology is the beauty contest that led to war. This is when feuding goddesses caused the Trojan War. When the wedding of Peleus and Thetis was happening, all of the Olympian gods were invited, well, except for Eris, the goddess of discord. She was angry and taught all the Olympian gods a lesson by throwing a golden apple with the engraved words, for the most beautiful. Three goddesses, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite, claimed the apple and fought over it. You might think that this was a very small thing, but gods and goddesses have a pride that no one and not even the great god Zeus dared to judge. The goddesses were told to go to Paris. The prince of Troy, who is infamous for his understanding of female beauty and his fair judgments. Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite presented themselves to Paris and tried to impress him with their beauty. When Paris could not decide, they tried to bribe him secretly. Hera promised to make him ruler of the greatest kingdom in the world. Athena promised to make him the most admired warrior in the world. While Aphrodite promised him the hand of Helen, the most beautiful woman in the world. Paris was enticed with Aphrodite's offer and accepted it. He gave the golden apple to Aphrodite and because of that, Paris and the land of Troy earned the enmity of Hera in Athena forever. This was what caused the Trojan War. We all know how petty and vain the gods and goddesses could be. Well, they're petty enough to start a war. Is there no one else? At number three, we have West African mythology. A popular tale from the West African mythology is about the spider trickster. 
It was when a spirit tried to capture all the world's wisdom in the form of a spider. The spider Anansi even tried to hoard the entire world's wisdom in a pot for himself. Once he succeeded, he tried to hide the pot at the top of a tree where nobody could find it. Anansi tied the pot in front of him and tried to climb the tree. But he kept sliding and losing his grip so his son suggested tying the pot to his back. When he followed his suggestion, the pot slipped and fell to the ground. All the wisdom he had taken fell out and sudden storm washed it into the river to the waters of the ocean. This is why everyone in the world now owns a little bit of it now. Imagine if that's how it truly happened. At number four, we have Japanese mythology. One famous story you should be hearing from Japanese mythology is about the first couple. This was when a lovelorn husband followed his wife to the land of the death. The primal human couple, Izanagi and Izanami, were the ones responsible for churning out islands from the sea and populated these with their children. Izanami, the woman, died while burying the fire god deities. This led to Izanagi feeling so distraught and was determined to bring her back. He went to Yomi, the shadowy land of death, to fetch Izanami. But once he arrived, Izanami had already eaten the food of Yomi, which made sure so she could never return again. Izanagi was so desperate to see his wife so he lit a torch and found that her once beautiful body had decayed and was already covered with maggots. He then ran out of the underworld while he was chased by Izanami, who wanted him to stay with her. Once he finally reached Earth, he covered the entrance with a huge boulder. Before he left, he heard his angry wife yell, I will kill a thousand living creatures each day. And he yelled back, Then I will create 1,500 new lives each day. This is one story in Japanese mythology that ends in eternal separation and bitterness. Some are familiar with the names Izanami and Izanagi highly probably because of Naruto. Mythology became part of a lot of things in the contemporary sense. All of these stories have become references for other stories. It's very interesting when you think about how things start from different mythologies. But since we're halfway through the episode, make sure you stick around to know what other mythologies that should interest you. Up next is one story we all are familiar with. At number 5, we have Abrahamic Mythology. We all know about how the original sin began. One iconic story we know about is the one about Adam and Eve and a slithery snake that God created the world out of nothingness in six days and rusted on the seventh day. We know about this story from the Bible. God created the first man, Adam, in his own image, and the first woman, Eve, from Adam's rib. But he also told Adam and Eve to enjoy the wonderful Garden of Eden, but not to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge, which was the forbidden fruit. Both obeyed God, but the devil in the form of a serpent enticed Eve to take a bite of the forbidden fruit. Then she convinced Adam to eat it which resulted in innocence being gone. The humans became aware of their nakedness and tried to cover themselves. This was when God was disappointed with his creations and casted them out of Eden for this original sin, the first act of disobedience. At number six, we have Polynesian mythology. We've all seen Moana, so this one story from Polynesian mythology is about Maui who was the fifth child of Taranga. Some have claimed that he was born dead, but others have said that he was born prematurely. People believed him to be a carrier of bad luck. This is why his mother threw him into the sea, wrapped in a tress of hair from her top knot. Ocean spirits found him, revived him, wrapped him in seaweed, and then gave him to the care of the Sky Father Rangi. He took Maui to the celestial realms and nourished him to adolescence. Maui then found the hair of his mother and decided to descend from the celestial world of his foster father and search for her in the world of humans. 
he was out of place in both worlds and realized the days on Earth were too short to get the work done. With the help of his brothers, he caught the sun in a noose and beat him severely with a jawbone club until he promised to go slower in future. Maui then hauled up a great island which lurked below sea in the form of a fish, using blood from his nose as bait and he went to find a priest to perform the appropriate ceremonies and prayers, leaving his brothers in charge of the fish. So we guess most of what Dwayne Johnson was rapping about in the Disney film, Moana, was legit. We can just imagine what other things could come out of this. But now that Maui's song is just stuck in our head, and since we're almost at the end of this episode, you shouldn't forget to click the like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for other great videos. Let's move on to the last mythology in our episode. At number 7, we have Inuit Eskimo Mythology. Now, not a lot may be familiar with this, but it is an interesting one. They have a gory story of how life was created in the oceans. The story starts with a beautiful young woman named Sedna. Sedna rejected a lot of suitors until one day, a seabird promised to take her away to his comfortable and luxurious home. Her impulsiveness drove her to elope with the bird, but the comfortable and luxurious home she was promised turned out to be a filthy and smelly nest. What's worse was that her new husband treated her like a slave. This led Sedna to beg her father to take her home. Once they were across the waters, a flock of birds surrounded the boat. It caused a tremendous storm, which forced Sedna's father to throw her into the ocean to appease the angry birds. Sedna tried to climb back into the boat and he cut her hands and threw her and her appendages into the water. As Sedna sank to the bottom of the ocean, her limbs grew into fish, seals, whales, and all of the other sea mammals. Well, that's a morbid tale of how life in the ocean began. We all knew that mythologies are very interesting, but this episode just proved how wide mythologies from different cultures are. Some start with small things and some stories have their own morbid end. However, these characters show their sense of self and heroism through their stories. What other mythologies interest you the most? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe to the bestest and hit the bell to access more of our videos. Thank you so much for watching and until our next bestest video.